The main negative effects of exposure to ultraviolet radiations is uh, uh, related to uh, the skin, uh, the eye, and also immunosuppression. So what we have seen over the years is when you are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, over time you may develop some chronic effects of exposure, mostly skin cancer in the form of malignant melanoma, as well as non-melanoma skin cancer, and you can also develop ocular melanoma. In 2007, myself and a few American colleagues published a paper where we showed the climate benefits of the Monster Protocol, and that's to the reduced emissions of the CFCs. And we showed there that the Monster Protocol had a climate benefit around 2010, which was about five to six times larger than the Kyoto Protocol, which is designed to protect climate. Parties could not use ozone depleting chemicals anymore, and a very promising alternative at that time were HFCs. What we showed in our paper, that it was a side effect of these alternatives. They did have a strong effect on climate change. Not so much now, but if their growth would continue, which was a projection we made, then they could contribute something like 20% to climate change compared to that of CO2. So a significant contribution. A significant growth in refrigerants is expected, especially in developing countries, because of economic development, population growth, rapid urbanization, electrification, and changing consumption patterns. This future growth is expected to be dominated by China and India, as well as other developing countries. This increased use of refrigerant could result in increased energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. By facing down HFC alongside with energy efficiency measure can help reduce an equivalent of 100 million tons of carbon dioxide by 2050, which would benefit the environment as well as human health. Climate change is very closely connected with, uh, with human health. Uh, many of the largest disease problems that we deal with, whether they're deaths due to extreme uh, weather events, infectious disease, or the health impacts of malnutrition, are all heavily determined by weather and climate conditions. The more that we put pressure on the environment, put pressure on the climate by emitting uh, greenhouse gases that uh, drive up temperatures, the more frequent and severe these heat waves are going to become. And of course, it isn't just heat waves. We also know that climate change gives us more uh, extreme floods, uh, more extreme droughts in many parts of the world. Those bring with them infectious disease, they kill people uh, directly, and they contribute to problems such as undernutrition. First, the Micronation delegation proposed this uh, amendment and followed by the US uh, delegations along with uh, Mexico and Canada, and another one coming from uh, the EU and Indian proposal. The global warming, climate change, tsunamis, tidal waves, the sea level in those islands are getting rise and some of the islands are in the south, it's already being submerged, forcing the inhabitants to move to higher grounds. In the years between 2009 and 2015, there have been more and more parties involved in taking action on HFCs. In October in 2016, in Kigali, there was the meeting of the parties again. And so after seven years of negotiations, they decided to amend the Montreal Protocol. They reached an agreement and a strong phase down of the HFCs for protection of climate. The agreement can avoid an increase in global temperature by the end of the century of 0.3 to 0.5 degrees Celsius. And that's very significant. The amendments will give an opportunity for the countries in the future, for developing countries especially, to change refrigerant and to improve our sector, the sector of refrigeration and air conditioning. To improve the system on energy efficiency, on environment, and create new jobs, and also to change the way of labor for repairing, installing this kind of system. In Kigali, there have been two groups of parties, of course, discussing what to do with HFCs. That is the developed countries, the non-Article 5 parties, and the developing countries, the Article 5 parties. In many non-Article 5 parties, there are, or there will be at short notice, 
regulations, prohibitions in place, and I can mention the EU with the FGAS is in place since 2015, which is a regulation that aims at phasing down HFCs by 2030 by 80%. In certain regions, in certain countries, um, some um, uh, natural refrigerants, we could say, start to be used, like ammonia and CO2 uh, for supermarket refrigeration and hydrocarbon for small charge uh, refrigeration equipment. Of course, the Kigal Amendment now make the things uh, clear and then in developing countries we will have a clear direction to take for the HFC replacement. You know that today, for the countries in development, we don't have the resources and the capacity necessary. So, for us, first, we have to reinforce our capacity. Then, we have to adapt our legislation to the internal, conform to the amendment de Kigali. Cela va nous permet non seulement de pouvoir nous adapter et également de pouvoir bénéficier de tout accompagnement que les pays qui sont responsables de ce qu'ils produisent pourront nous accompagner pour nous permettre aussi de nous adapter, de nous permettre de vivre dans un monde meilleur, bien sûr, pour nos populations. Low GWP refrigerant offre un lower impact en direct émission in order to lower the total impact on global warming. However, we need to take into account that low GWP refrigerant need safety measures. For instance, ammonia has the lowest GWP of zero, but present problem of toxicity. Hydrocarbon are less expensive than HFCs, they are not toxic. Global warming potential below 20, but they are flammable. CO2, GWP of 1, is a non-flammable gas. It's not toxic in low concentration, but could be harmful in high concentration. And CO2 system operates at very high pressure compared to other refrigerants. Unsaturated HFCs, called HFO, has low global warming potential, but they are mildly flammable. The new alternative refrigerant will have uh, uh, different properties. So training will have a very important role to change uh, the competence of actual uh, technicians to have uh, them properly trained for the specific characteristic of a new refrigerant. The challenges will start from the unavailability of technologies for all applications. The slow rate of technology transfer is another challenge. The uncertainty of the financial mechanism to phase out or to phase down these chemicals. And then we have the issue of cost. Some of these new technologies, especially the HFOs, are significantly more expensive than what currently exists in the market. So we have to address that as well. That research now needs to be put into practical terms and into equipment that can be commercially available. And to do that, it requires not just the manufacturers to work on this, but it also requires researchers, it requires code bodies and governments to enact uh, regulations related to the safe uh, use of those refrigerants. Keeping people, products and livestock cool in a warming climate is absolutely critical for health and prosperity, but increasing the efficiency of that cooling can cut costs for businesses and for consumers. It can help increase access to cooling for those that don't have it, and it can help to protect the planetary ecosystem upon which all life depends. So it's a win-win-win, and we really need to all get on and make it happen.